We're in Kansas at Jubilee Ministry Center. We're about to enter a service, and the message is entitled, Excuses or... Excellence. Excuses or excellence. This is a teaching that came to my wife, and the Lord normally gives me the scriptures, and she might get revelation, and she'll share it with me, and the Lord will give me the download. It's good to be married, isn't it? Teamwork. So does any of these sound familiar? I'm too busy. Uh, the timing's not just right. I don't want to impose on them. Nobody can afford it. How many months and years have already gone by and you're still in a similar or the same situation? excuses or excellence. What you're really saying with these excuses is, I'll do it tomorrow. The Chiefs are playing. <laughs> I'm too tired. Oh, I'm not good with technology. It's just not my personality. Can I make a statement tonight that I believe that how you do anything is how you do everything? Little keys unlock big doors, big doors swing on small hinges. Excuses or justifications, limiting beliefs, and reasons to delay or avoid taking positive action. It's often an attempt to shirk responsibility, avoid the situation, or accept a lesser or wrong choice. James, the brother of Jesus, said a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways and should expect to receive only 90% of the promises in Scripture. No, 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 sorry. Let me correct myself. 50% of the promises in Scripture. 10%? A double-minded man, one that vacillates back and forth between Egypt and Canaan land, between stepping out in faith and staying in the boat, between sharing the gospel with the person at work and shrinking back with thumbtack faith. We get our thumbtack with that little bitty point pointed at the right direction and it only goes about that far. James, the brother of Jesus, said a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways and should expect to receive nothing from the Lord, James 1.8. The difference between 211 degrees and 212 degrees is just one degree. The difference between 211 and 212, just one little degree, going the extra degree, is the difference between a really piping hot cup of coffee at 211 or being able to move a steam engine at 212. The difference between first place and second place in the Olympics when it comes to running events or swimming events is often just one one hundredth of a second. The difference between gold and silver, one one hundredth of a second. The difference between first place and second place in a golf tournament, one stroke. The difference between making the playoffs and losing is one fumble, one flag, one extra first down. It's a game of inches. And those that operate in excellence and go the extra degree, go to the next level. Excuses or excellence. It's always our choice. There's no temptation that's taking you or me except that which is common 
unto every man. But with the temptation, the temptation to shrink back. He always makes a way. Daniel had an excellent spirit, Daniel 6.3. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and the princes because he had an excellent spirit in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Now Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. That's a different translation. Saul, King Saul, had an excuse spirit. Daniel had a spirit of excellence. So they inquired further of the Lord, has Saul come here yet? And the Lord said, yes, he has hidden himself amongst the supplies. King James, hidden himself amongst the stuff. So he's anointed to be king privately. But he hid himself from being king publicly. Many of you have had encounters with the Lord where the Lord has anointed you with an idea, a witty invention, a teaching, a prophetic word, something that would crack the code, music or technology or business or finance or opening a nursery school or reaching out to do something with orphans or an idea to create boxes and to send them out. And he anointed you privately. And now he's calling you out from amongst the stuff where you've hidden thinking you're not worthy to birth that thing. They ran and brought Saul out and he was stood amongst the people for Samuel 10, 22 and 23. He was a head taller than any of the others. God is going to impart during our impartation time the strength to birth things that he's conceived in you. This is a very interesting verse. Thus saith Hezekiah, this is a day of trouble and of rebuke and of blasphemy for the children are come to the birth and there is not strength to bring them forth. Do you know where the majority of the gifts, the talents, the ideas that God has given people are hidden at? They're hidden in cemeteries all over the world. God's treasures never made it to birth. But tonight, God is going to be imparting strength to give birth to what he's conceived in you. And you're going to begin to birth these things and it's going to shift things for you, your family, your ministry, your business, your finances, because God's not just the God in church. He's the God on the seven mountains of media. We live out in Hollywood area and there's so many amazingly gifted and talented people. And you know, people say to me, David, don't you have problems out there in that this or that? And they, 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 they name labels. And I say, I never have any problems in those arenas. I said, because many of those people have never met Jesus, but they love Jesus when you introduce them. All they've had was religion and judgment. But when you walk in the overflow and your batteries charged up, you spill out Jesus and they love Jesus. Look in the scriptures. The world loved Jesus. The religious folks hated him. You can only reach somebody with the love of God when you love them more than you love their issue. Let me rephrase that. When somebody has an issue, you can only reach them effectively with the gospel when you love them more than their issue. 
they've got a drug addiction, an alcohol addiction, if they're a pornographer, if they're a brawler, if they're a whoremonger, if they're any of those things. If they're a religious Pharisee or a heretic, you'll never reach them with the kingdom of God until you love them more than their stumbling block or issue. Somebody loved you and me, didn't they? How many of us had some issues? The rest of you will cast out lion spirits later. <laughs> How do we make excuses? Why do we make excuses? One of the root causes of making excuses is fear. Based on past experience and the perception of these experiences, we often allow fear, false evidence appearing real, to stop us and then we begin finding excuses and reasons for not taking action. Will God send the people to me? Why don't you step out and maybe God will send them once you get out of the boat? Joanna? One of the things the Lord highlighted to me while we worked on this teaching was how did he look at myself? And I realized that I had a very critical spirit um, towards others. It was judgmental. And little things would irritate me. And I think, God, you know, they're just, they're always late, you know, and or they always do this. But it was a real critical spirit. And the Lord convicted me of that. And I realized it actually had to do with myself. What? I had a critical spirit about myself. What? And so uh, that is also rooted in not loving myself and accepting myself as Jesus created me to be. Wow. Yeah, so that I would project it. I would project it on others and then get irritated by little things. And uh, so I repented of that and I realized, wow, I need to accept myself and just let myself be okay with those things that are not perfect. Amen. So. Amen. We're forever learning, aren't we? From glory to glory, grace to grace, from faith to faith. What do excuses really mean? It means we really don't want to do something or we lack desire or lazy. We don't want it. We are held back or held captive by fear. We don't want to be rejected. That's fear. We are complacent and comfortable. When someone offers you your favorite dessert, why do you say yes? Because you want it. We have a tendency to get what we really passionately seek after. Whatever you reverence or whatever you pursue will come closer to you. Jacob have I loved, that supplanter, that liar, that manipulator that stole the birthright. Jacob, that guy has passion. I love him. Esau sold his birthright for a bowl of soup. Scripture said, Esau have I hated. Wow. He loved the liar, the manipulator, the supplanter, the thief. And it was odious to him, the one who didn't pursue the things of God and was willing to sell his birthright for a bowl of soup because he was hungry. God's perspective is different, isn't it? You might see someone that ain't all right, but they're passionate. God's like, I love that one spirit. Guess what? Jacob in the process, God corrected him in his own way and his own timing. And his wages were changed 10 times. He was tricked. He was manipulated. He was deceived. And he was 20 years in labor for one wife and on his wedding night, he got tricked and got the wrong one. You know, those Jewish head coverings and outfits, that could happen before LED lighting. And then he had to work another seven years for the wife that he wanted. Then he had to work another six years before he could leave. But God gave him wisdom. And then he reconciled with his brother. Are you passionate? You may not be all right in the process. God will get you right. He'll put some straightening on you. He'll find you on a street called straight. <laughs> there was a guy by the name of King Saul, or Saul of Tarsus. He was on the road to Damascus. He was out to kill some Christians. He was passionate about it. 
He loved to kill them folks. God says, that's one I can use. I think I'm going to send my son on the road to Damascus. Get him free from those Damascus friends. <laughs> Kabam! Knocked him off that high horse of pride. Blinded him by the light. And then he sent Ananias to lay hands on him. Ananias could have said, I ain't going. That dude's out killing Christians. He could have made an excuse. But instead, he went to the terrorist and laid hands on him that he might receive the sight. Somebody came to Christ a few years ago on the television station that we broadcast on, and they were going to videotape and kill 15 more families, cut off heads, right? And uh, yeah, so is an ISIS terrorist. And um, I'm smiling because it's got a good story to it. I mean, it's got a good ending. So on the rabbit ears on satellite, the love of God arrests him. And instead of going and killing 15 more families, he was actually the videographer. So he would video so they could do it. And uh, the love of God arrested him. And instead of going to kill or participate in video so they could send it viral, Jesus arrested him in his tracks. So the head of the network gets the call and he tells his testimony, the ISIS terrorist. And there's another guy who also had the same similar thing happen. He says, yes, he says, I'm now filled. I had an encounter with Jesus. I'm no longer a Muslim. I'm no longer a terrorist. I'm a Christian now. He says, I don't want to change my name to Matthew. <laughs> the owner of the network says, no, you are Paul. He says, no, I like the name Matthew. He says, no, you were out killing Christians. Name yourself Paul. So they had to get him out of that country. They raised about 20,000, got him out of the country. And first he wanted to go preach to the, the head, heads of the the ISIS about Jesus. And he said, no, no, you don't need to do that. He goes, no, they need to know this love because what would have happened if somebody would have done, shared the gospel with you that had an experience watching satellite TV on rabbit ears? He says, oh, I would have killed them. He says, I think there's some wisdom here. He says, let's go get you disciples. So he called a friend of his and he says, listen, he says, I've got a guy who's been involved in a bunch of murders with the ISIS terrorist group. He says, would you be willing to take him into your home with your wife and daughter and disciple him? There's some saucer looking eyes in the audience right now. He said, let me pray about it. And he came back, not with an excuse, but with an excellent spirit, he said, yes, bring him and I will disciple him and in my home. What we're really saying is we don't believe in our God given ability. We don't really believe our message or calling or anointing or ministry can help someone. We're complacent and comfortable in our current situation or we have limiting beliefs and then extend or project our own limitations onto others. But you can decide to make a wiser choice today. Are you ready to get out of the boat and walk on the water when Jesus calls? James 1, 5 through 8, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all that they do. The word there in the original Greek is dual suke. It means dual psyche or double-minded. We're two-souled. We've got the mind of Christ. 
and we've got the mind of ourselves. Sometimes you got to lose your mind and get the mind of Christ. Sometimes when doubt and disbelief comes, you got to doubt your disbelief. So you can just say, I doubt my doubts. Thank you, devil, for confirming my faith. When the enemy tried to kill me in 2015 for 11 months, I had a health battle. Appreciate all your prayers. When the enemy would come, and it was horrible spiritual warfare. Listen to this. The enemy always overplays his hand. And when he speaks to your ear, when he speaks through circumstances, here's what would happen. He would give me a dream in the middle of the night of me with a tombstone and my name on it and this and that. And I would wake up laughing. And I would say, thanks for the confirmation. I will not die, but I will live and declare the works of the Lord because that's not what the Lord would show me. I know that's what you showed me because I know it's not true. You're trying to get me to come into agreement, but I doubt my doubts and I believe the word of God. It's okay to doubt your doubts, but believe the word of God for your life. God's word is like a fire and a hammer. Jeremiah 23, 28 through 29 is not my word. Like a fire declares the Lord and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces. Are you ready to go from excuses to excellence? Are you ready to go the extra degree? Are you ready to reach out and begin to share the love of God? Are you willing to take the homeless person into the restaurant and buy them lunch and sit down with them? Are you willing as a shepherd to get close enough to the sheep to risk smelling like them? Amen or ouch? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah or heretic? Hallelujah. <laughs> you can make a difference because you have the nail scarred hand of Calvary under your hand. For five years, we had Eagle Heart Fellowship on Friday nights. The Lord told me to buy a $150 camera, 720p, state of the art. Yeah. And I recorded services. And I put them on YouTube on three quarters of a megabyte upload speed. It would take 36 hours. <laughs> my phone uploads, uploads 50 megabytes right now, but my home computer three quarters back then. It's not that many years ago. So we had a church service for about four or five years on 40 Highway with 30 or 40 people. And then God opened the doors. We went on TV to 100 million people. God wants to promote you in every area of your life. And if you're faithful with little, he'll give you authority over much. What's the difference between 211 degrees and 212? Just one degree. Well, one makes really good popping, piping hot coffee at 211, but at 212, just one degree more, it makes steam and you can move a steam engine across the nation. Are you willing and ready to go from excuses to excellence so that you can be all you're called to be? God wants to reveal and replace the limiting mindsets and fears connected to your excuses. God's word is the all-consuming fire. The wicked flee when no man pursues him, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Henry Ford says, whether you believe you can or believe you can't, it is true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can have the Ford in any color you want as long as it's black. <laughs> Whether you believe you can or you believe you can't, it's true. I can't do all things through Christ Jesus who threatens me. It doesn't even taste right in your mouth, does it? Bible says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Sometimes we have to tear down before we can build up. 
Jeremiah 1.10, See today I point over you nations and kingdoms to uproot and to tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and plant. Do you know that four-sixths of this, uproot, tear down, destroy and overthrow, is demolition. Sometimes we have to demolish strongholds in our mind before we can reestablish the other two six so we can build and plant. Are you ready and prepared to use your God given authority? Let's stand and let's pray together. Then we're going to move into a ministry time for impartation. And God's going to impart to you strength to give birth. We're also going to get an update on the Chiefs game. So let's say this. Lord, I take responsibility for all the excuses I've made. And I ask for forgiveness tonight, tonight. For, me for me and my bloodline, and my bloodline. in the mighty, the mighty name of Jesus, Jesus. of Nazareth. Of Nazareth. I, willingly I willingly choose, choose to, break to break ties and to come out of agreement, out of agreement. With, all with all fear, all doubt, all, doubt. all laziness, all, laziness. all complacency. All guilt and shame. Holy Spirit, I ask you now, renew my mind to the mind of Christ and release your power, your love, your courage, and your wisdom. Fill me with the boldness of a lion and help me walk in my true destiny. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Go on YouTube and you'll find on October 14th, Jubilee Ministry Time, you'll get an opportunity to experience the impartation that occurred in that service. And God's going to do the same thing for you. What he did here, he's going to do for you. He's going to touch you like never before.